Hey everyone, Boozer here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the uh, ongoing uh, Triple Savage event um, and the upcoming CBC event um, and the teams that I have um, that I regularly use to farm Fire Knight and maybe I'll give you guys some ideas uh, just seeing them in action. Um, so I'll go over some of that. Uh, let's go over the event that's going on right now first. So today we have uh, ongoing. It's the triple savage event, triple drop rate for savage. So it's one of the best opportunities for you guys to use your energy to get the most savage gear possible. Um, it's not going to be an insane amount, um, but you'll get a, you'll get a noticeable uh, amount of in, uh, of boosted chance on savage gear so if you guys are just starting to build your sets or adding extra savage sets then definitely uh, hit that up for uh, as much energy that you can afford keep in mind that a double dragon speed event follows right after so the best part about this is that it lines up perfectly with cvc so you can farm uh, fire knight with cvc points um and it also lines up very well with the Galix path, which is basically just a dungeon diver plus artifact enhancement combined into one. So it's you're you're doing you're getting a lot of extra value by doing dungeons during the CVC. So the points, uh, you know, there's not much here in the Galix path. I mean, this is all like it's really just rubbish like kind of stuff. So. Don't think too hard about this Titan event. Like Titan event points, if I get all the points from the Galax event, I get a, I get these three at the bottom, which is like good value, I guess. But like um, the Galax point of, uh, rewards are really poor, and it actually you, it requires you to go pretty deep in terms of uh, spend uh, expenditure. So um, you know, it's just something I'll, I'll keep an eye on, but I'm not going to go too hard with. Uh, I've I probably already missed a bunch of these points. Like, I don't really care. At the end of the end of the day, you're only getting this. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, who cares? Like, after like three months of grinding, you get this. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, right? It's fine. It's just extra stuff. And then obviously you're grinding the Fire Knight tournament at the same time. Um, and when CBC drops, you get the Artifact Enhancement event, so you can level up your, uh, sorry, when CBC drops, you can also level up your Artifacts, which will give you Galix Path points, so it's kind of like, it's a pretty jam-packed CBC, like pretty high value, so uh, definitely look into it, and uh, today I'm going to show you guys some efficient teams that I use uh, to farm Fire Knight, so let's uh, hop right into it. So triple savage event. So I'll show you guys the teams that I use. So currently for 24, I farm 24 um, basically during non-CVC because dungeon stage 24 gives you uh, the most um, qu uh, quantity of quality drops as well. It's the best balance of um, basically like the base. It's the best balance of quality silver and everything added together energy expenditure um, so to me like I, and I think mathematically the the difference is quite large for um, stage 24 so definitely I, I farm stage 24 um, you're gonna get way more six star epic year um, than anywhere else um, so for 25 the argument is uh, you get slightly better chance at legendary gear but you sacrifice everything else so you will get lower less six star epic gear uh, you'll get more rare stuff you'll get more five star five stars all for a small chance at more legendary gear well i don't think my gear is at that level yet where i can only benefit from legendary gear of course like yes it's nice but i also don't think the the bonus chance of getting legendary gear offsets all the bonuses of level 24. So I always farm 24 first, and I only farm 25 in any dungeon for um, CVC purposes or for affinity purposes uh, if I'm like solo farming or something like that. So for dragon, for example, I use um, I use uh, Tomb Lord, which is positive affinity for 2025. 20, so I I do I use him there so that's why I do 25 um, otherwise I, I would just do 24 so let's show my 24 team so show my 24 team it's this one it's obviously has some presets I can go over that so this is my team uh, 
I run Lysandra in the lead, and here's my stats. It's kind of a, it's kind of a lesser seen one. You guys won't see this very often, but I run Ursula the Mourner. Basically, Ursula gives me the 100% win rate on this run, um, just because I'm not running with like infinite energy. So I usually run this overnight, or if I'm at work, uh, basically away at the computer. And uh, total run time is about two minutes. Um, occasionally, it'll sneak down to like 1:30, um, but to about two minutes, which is about you know, 50 seconds slower than my fastest run. Um, I run a cohort. Here are the stats of my cohort. Uh, you just want 70% crit rate, of course. Uh, crit damage will be capped against the boss, especially with the defense down. So you don't need too much crit damage. Accuracy, um, 300 is plenty. You can you could even sneak in with like 200, 220. Uh, seer, here's my seer. She's speed tuned with the whole team. Uh, she has. Uh, Cycle of Revenge, which speeds her up after the first wave, but is still speed tuned with the rest of the team. Um, accuracy is enough to strip um, some hard Doom Tower waves, uh, so that's why it's set up like that. You could definitely get rid of accuracy uh, for more damage. Uh, she also is specced with Warmaster, so with Warmaster she hits the boss harder, but she'll lose the 20 crit damage against the waves. So just something to consider if you're low in crit damage, definitely add. Uh, Add flawless execution instead of Helm, uh, Warmaster. Uh, Stagnite just speed tuned. Uh, he's in a shield set to uh, basically debuff. He's here for the for the speed down against the boss and uh, the big shield set. So it's a hundred percent team. Uh, it's mainly because Ursula is in it. Uh, sorry, I forgot the presets. It's mainly because Ursula is in it. The so round two. Round two. No reset champion here, so just a slow little beat down on round two, okay? All right, do a quick run. So buff up, down. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, so they have to cycle back around. It's usually about 40 seconds to get to the boss. If you have a reset champion, it'll probably take you about 20 seconds or less with the Kaimar. If you have a, if you have a renegade, it's about 25 seconds. That was a pretty quick one, 35 seconds to the boss. So you want to use your um, obviously A1s against the shield. So preset A1 to open here. Uh, Lysandra has the speed up, so it speeds everyone up first. Needs the Heartseeker to land, and it does. So if the Heartseeker fails, so the, if the Heartseeker fails, this is where uh, Ursula comes into play. So she has the possibility to uh, kick back the turn meter uh, with the A1. So it gives Lysandra a chance to come back to exhaustion. Uh, it may or may not work, So because her A1 is... Um, I believe only 50% chance booked to decrease turn meter. Um, if she fails and the Fire Knight gets a turn, the team won't wipe. And if the team wipes, uh, Ursula picks them back up with the revive. And the revive has a turn meter on it, so the team has a chance to pick back up where it left off pretty quickly. So that's why she's included in this. She also brings a bunch of buffs on both her A2 and A3. Um, and of course, the A1 turn meter is very good. She's easy to build. Uh, she needs a bit of accuracy. Um, so, and uh, if you need her for faction wars, she's pretty godly in faction wars. Uh, she can carry like a team of like 40s and 50s, and you'll be able to do it. As advertised, two minutes. So pretty standard two-minute run. It's 100%. I don't have to worry about this team like ever failing. Um, yeah, so that's my 24 team. Um, I'm not going to run this team for CBC, obviously, because 25 gives uh, way more points than 24. So we're going to jump into 25. I'll show you my 25 team. You can see my best times here. Um, 110 was with a team with Rollguard, uh, which is not a 100% team. Um, just because Rollguard can weak hit on his speed down. Uh, so that's really, really bad. Um, you really need speed down against this boss unless you're running some pretty insane, insane gear. 
Um, so I'll show you guys my 25 team. Uh, again, this is a very high win rate team, very high win rate team. Um, it's pretty standard. I mean, you have uh, I use this is one of my role guards I use for Hydra. He's in Relentless. Uh, you don't need this much crit damage, but it does help his um, A1, A3 hit harder. Uh, accuracy is enough for this boss. Um, speed he's speed tuned to go after Seer. My Seer is 219, so Seer goes first. Um, Renegade is like such an insane champ for Fire Knight. She's like basically made for for this uh, for this boss. She has the speed down, and then the reset, and then the turn meter, a turn meter drop. Uh, sorry, a heal reduction, and then she has the um, speed down multi hit here. It's she's really really good. So she's specked out for damage here. Uh, I believe I have her in a shield set. Um, I think I was running her in like other comps, so I needed the shield set on her because uh, Lydia actually has a shield set on as well. Uh, they don't really, you don't get two buffs for them, so I just have them both in shield set because I was running them in different um, different teams. Um, but yeah, Lydia specked out uh, in War Master. Uh, she's Hydra viable, that's why her stats are like this. You definitely don't need this high stats. Um, speed, uh, speed 250, 260 is fine. Uh, allures is my allure. She's in immunity, uh, so that's just an extra buff. She has accuracy for Dark Fae, so that's why I have it so high. If you don't use her for Dark Fae, I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, you don't need this high accuracy. Uh, so speed, you want her as fast as possible. Uh, ideally, even faster to improve consistency, especially if you don't have speed down. But uh, for me, I think with speed down, you're looking at like 265, 270 is okay. Uh, you you definitely want as high as you can get with speed down. Without speed down, you're probably looking closer to 290. Uh, you want them to cycle back as soon as possible. And then the seer, same seer as we used last time. So i just go over the presets real quick, if you guys want to take a look. Yeah. Okay, so we'll hop right in. So this is a 100% um, 100 team. And it's relatively quick, it's about a minute 30, minute 10. Very consistent minute 10, minute 30 team. So first wave in six seconds. Should be about 22 seconds to the boss, I think. Okay, so now Rolgar is doing some stuff. So there you go, and Seer, so 21 seconds to the boss. This is where the time gets eaten up. Uh, the boss takes a while to, to down. I expect everybody in War Master or Giant Slayer, so they're, they're able to hit as hard as they can against the boss here. So you want the speed down right there. Both of these will not weak hit against them, so it's just an accuracy check. But unless they get resisted, then it gets kind of ugly, but it's unlikely. Um, okay, so we got all the debuffs going on right now. Okay, she takes a double turn, slam. 269 is the max, so they can't go over 269. Getting some lucky extra turns there for some bo uh, bonus damage. Okay. All right, 226. My best time is 108. Yeah, it, sometimes it can be faster, but uh, rare piece. Yeah, that's my Fire Knight team. These teams are 100% or pretty close to 100%. Uh, this one I've never seen this fail, but it's possible it fails if maybe you get resisted somehow I don't know on the speed down I think with these speeds though the current speeds it's it's fast enough that it won't fail but it's possible uh, let's go over some uh, let's go over the champions the gear if you guys want to see it uh, went over the stats real quick so shield set so this uh, seer is in savage uh, savage and crit damage uh, basically you just care about max crit damage Give her some HP so she can survive in Doom Tower, uh, and then give her some accuracy if you want. If you want her to do stuff in Doom Tower, if not, then no accuracy is fine. 
just because she'll one shot the waves in dungeons, so you never need accuracy anyways. Um, sorry, and I have her spec'd out in Warmaster. Warmaster. Um, Lydia is also in Warmaster. She's a PVE Lydia. I don't use her for Arena. Uh, in this case, uh, I think Evil Eye may be better than Laura Steel. So Laura Steel gives me, I believe, six accuracy, which is probably not necessary. Uh, but Evil Eye helps against the Fire Knight. So I'll probably this probably is better. So just something to consider, guys. And of course, War Master at the end. Uh, roll guard. He's my Hydra roll guard. So he's in. He has refresh with relentless. Um, bit low accuracy, but it's basically just subbing out this banner. I can sub out this banner for an accuracy banner, and then he'll have enough for Hydra, and then he'll lose like 5k HP. So he's at 55k HP, which is plenty, even for Hydra. He's doing quite well. Masteries, War Master, uh, War Master. That's about it. Uh, Lure, she's an immunity. Um, yeah, overcapped because she's ranked crit damage, uh, crit rate gloves. I don't have any way to lower this. <laughs> Enough accuracy for Dark Fae. Uh, I have most of these champions in Blood Shield accessories because I was trying out different specs. Uh, basically trying to run without Lydia um, and try to run with uh, other champions. Uh, but yeah, like you notice that they have um, some Blood Shield accessories. So Allure, uh, Giant Slayer is the best, all damage, uh, extra accuracy, yeah. She actually does okay damage once the Giant Slayer starts going off, but you don't need her, you can, like, she could be a candidate for a fast shield set as well, you don't need her in immunity, it's just wherever the gear lands uh, on these champions. Uh, so Renegade, Renegade's in a shield set. She doesn't need to be, but because uh, I was mentioning that she's uh, she's sometimes separated from Lydia for other, I was trying other teams. Um, so I just left her in this gear. Uh, you can gear her in whatever gear you want. Uh, a blood shield accessory, not necessary for this team with Lydia, but without Lydia, you probably need blood shield and divine shield, divine speed sets on divine sets on some of your champions for extra buffs. Um, enough accuracy for 25. She, I give her damage. Uh, not too slow, not too fast, but uh, you want her to go decently fast so she can get some extra hits in, and the resets and stuff really help. And then mastery, war master, and extension on debuffs, and then chance to buff more, chance to uh, get back her uh, her refresh and her uh, multi hits. So yeah. Uh, Let's see what else. Oh, Lysandra. Lysandra is just, uh, this is my 24 team. So Lysandra is just, yeah, it's just fast. Good accuracy, enough accuracy for Dark Fae. That's where I use her. Uh, and then she is, she doesn't have a Blood Shield accessory, which kind of makes the, uh, including her in any, any kind of non-Lydia team kind of sketchy. It doesn't work super well. Um, so yeah, I, I really hope to get a Blood Shield accessory then maybe I'll spec uh, another team but right now this is uh this is what I have uh so stagnite stagnite's basically a replacement for Lydia in a shield set and he has a divine shield uh divine shield set so these are two separate buffs so the shield set buff and the divine set uh, shields are different and the blood shield shields are different so if you have all that stuff then it's great uh, the, the, just extra buffs for your seer uh, to to pump out some damage. Uh, stats are here. Just HP, speed tuned, and then accuracy to land stuff. I just use him in uh, I just use him in faction wars, so he doesn't need to be too insane. Ursula, she's in regen, makes her super tanky. Like she just doesn't die. Uh, and uh, yeah, she has a blood shield accessory just to help the seer. And then she's speed tuned to run uh, after the seer, of course. Accuracy to land stuff, and then stats to survive. She's also in War Master. Stagnite's also in War Master. Uh, for Stagnite, make sure you guys get the uh, sniper. This is very important because I believe Stagnite fully booked is only 
70 percent yes yeah, so 70 70 plus 25 so fully booked he's only 95 percent so you definitely 100 percent need sniper to uh, to get him to 100 percent land his decrease defense like that's such a such a thing eh <laughs> so funny um yeah so and then my cohort, she's in random gear, like you notice, like in level eight, uh, level eight weapon. She's just in cohorts are great, because then they just use up all your garbage gear. So I basically just specced out whatever garbage gear I had, um, and then yeah, seventy crit rate, and then just enough damage. The cap damage is very low, so you don't need to go crazy on the crit damage. Enough accuracy to land stuff. I have a blood shield accessory, like they're just really bad accessories, like triple, like. But whatever, as long as it works. Um, and yeah, and and just make her fast. The speed, the speed really helps because then the multi hits come back and the giant slayers come back. So she spec out on giant slayer, of course. Um, and they just really help uh, just down the boss, right? All right, so that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys are ready for CBC. Hope these teams uh, provide some additional. Uh, you know, insight, maybe give you guys some ideas. Maybe you guys were thinking about changing over um, and you guys wanted to see an action, but uh, this is what works for me. Um, these are, like I said, 100% teams. I don't have to think about it. Uh, obviously, the team with Ursula can be sped up um, with um, lots of different types of builds. Like, And obviously, the Renegade can be subbed out with Kaimar. Um, and Kaimar makes the team at least 10 seconds faster, I would say, because the reset on the on wave two, he makes the team at least 10 seconds faster. But he's not 100%, I don't think. Um, so you know that's kind of like the the trade off. Um, I like the consistency of Renegade because uh, then she does provide extra damage and turn meter drop against the boss, uh, and the speed down is very useful. So, anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, have a good uh, CBC, and I'll see you guys in the next one.